If you find that you like tank chats, why not subscribe to the Tank Museum channel and you can watch them all. Thanks very much. Now this is the Humber Hornet. It's based on Ruck FV1600 and it was um, really done as a launching vehicle for the Malkara missile at the back and I'll come to that in a minute. What had actually happened was that the, uh, the Malkara, which is a wire-guided anti-tank missile, had actually been evolved in Australia. The Australians had designed it with help from the uh, British experts and um, it was a wire-guided missile, much bigger than any wire-guided missile had ever been. And it was designed literally to destroy any tank that it hit. Always assuming you can hit a tank with one. The or original idea was to build it into a version of Centurion, which is what they did, or at least they started to do. But they then thought it might be an idea to make an air-portable version, which the parachute squadron could use, and it gave them the same anti-tank capability as the real, um, the real tanks. At least that was the theory. It's based on a humble one-ton armoured truck, which itself evolved from the FV-1600. And um, it's just a cab unit with a new rear end and the missiles on a hydraulic arm. They generally lift it up for firing and lower down for manoeuvring, otherwise the vehicle will fall over. And when it was raised, the missiles would go to a certain extent, at least left and right, just a little bit so that it could be aimed. And it raises it up above the level of the cab and fires over the cab. Now they had three men inside the Humber, the driver, the wireless operator who sat at the back, and the commander who was also the launcher for the, the guided missile. And he sat to the left of the driver. And he has a sort of hood, which you can see there, which guides the missile on its way. Anyway, the missile was fired it had a range in its Mark 1A um, variation of about 4,000 yards, which actually is probably as far as anyone can see, if not more so. But the idea was that by firing it that way, you could launch it against a, um, an enemy tank and blow it to pieces at any range. I think the chances of seeing one at that range would be pretty slim, but there we are. That's what they did. It's got a container which houses the remote control launching apparatus. You could take the commander out of the vehicle in other words and he could get us somewhere in the countryside about a hundred yards away from the vehicle and still launch it from there and that's the idea anyway. It's four-wheel drive naturally powered by a Rolls-Royce B60 engine although it's a Humber um, so it's a real military vehicle. Loads of air, air conditioning for the crew and stowage boxes on the side. The missiles at the back and in addition to having two missiles on the launcher, it carried two more down the bottom in a locker at the back. And that um, meant that you, got, you could carry four missiles altogether. It was launched by parachute, and the idea of one of these, which weighs between five and six tonnes, actually hurtling from the sky on a platform, it, it was towed out of the aircraft by one parachute, and then it dropped to the ground with a cluster of parachutes around it, and when it landed, the idea was that the platform underneath it would have um, airbags which would burst or at least deflate as the thing came into land so it wouldn't hit the ground so hard. That was the idea. And it meant that the paras, in theory, had a vehicle which they could operate as an anti-tank vehicle at the time. Pa the parachute squadron started off as Cyclops Squadron of 2nd Royal Tank Regiment and then became the RAC Parachute Squadron. It meant that the guys went around with parachute berets on and had all the trimmings of paras, but they were actually tank men and fought as tank men. Um, it's got about, I suppose, about a thousand yards of wire, which is carried by the missile itself, and the wire is unreeled from the missile as it flies. The missile itself would fly at about 300 miles an hour. So you can see that the controller has got quite a job keeping his eye on where things are going and making sure that he hits the target. And that's how it works. But the missile works on a, it, it has a charge inside it, and it works like a squash head round. It, it, it envelops the side of the tank and spreads out and then explodes. And that's how it detonates and, and breaks through the armour. 
and they say it would destroy a lot. They never actually practiced it because um, they didn't want to destroy tanks with it. But they did fire a few dummies just to find out how it went. And um, it was a vehicle that was rather an improvisation, if you like. And it was only in service for a relatively short time. But once they'd um, finished with it, that was the end of it, and it went out of service. If you like these films, please do subscribe to the Tank Museum's YouTube channel. And if you can, please do support us on Patreon.